Hey folks, well, with a straight bends this year, today a really fun one, not. And that is trying to uh, replace the ball joint, the lower ball joint, which is one of the most um, I don't know what adjective to pick yet, but it's not fun. Let me put it that way. Hello, folks. Ralph with Stray Brands is here. It should go without saying that any work that you're going to do on your own car is on your risk. I make these videos to uh, for fo folks who already know what they're doing. This is typically not done by novices. Some of the work is can become a uh, safety hazard, hazard if it's not done correctly. So um, please be careful. But this is really truly uh, your work, your risk, you on your own. That's all I got to say as a disclaimer to uh, the many videos that I post here, but especially the ones uh, with the safety note. Take care and enjoy. So for that, you have to remove the uh, tie rod or if you don't want to do that um, the better thing to do is, is actually to loosen up these two screws and then you can just flip that whole assembly aside and you don't need to worry about messing up the um, ball joint uh, the, the threads of the tapered uh, fitting you need to loosen up this the ABS sensor that I soaked, but it is stuck. You need to loosen up the um, the wire holder for the ABS one. The dust shield needs to come off. Eventually, we'll have to take the uh, upper ball joint off right there, so we can get this whole assembly out. So we can get to this. As you can see, this one is is toast um not fun i'm gonna loosen up this dust shield and then i'm literally gonna break into into this one here let's see what kind of fun stuff we're gonna get into first things first you need to take the brake the uh, brake caliper off and I have two big M12s, uh, fine threads that you need to take off. They are usually on there. So once you have take, taken this off, I'll show you how to zip tie this to the suspension so it's out of the way and you're not busting any of the electronics and the uh, brake holes. And I've got the one screw out of the brake caliper the other one coming and I'm just also gonna quickly get the brake wear sensor connector off because I don't want for that to dangle it around so now I can take the brake off. Sometimes it takes a little bit more convincing depending on how how much you have um, like how much of a lip there is on the on the brake rotor and then I'm gonna take zip ties and hang the brake saddle over on the side. Right, I think you can see it. Put a zip tie around here, and then this can dangle now. And there's no load on the hose or on this part. So now I can get focus on this part here. What you're gonna need here is a. I typically use a screwdriver. Uh, and then gently use this groove and there's a special actually a special tool believe believe it or not that lets you do that without doing this and you get it a little tap 
you see this opens up turn 180 then more doesn't take an awful lot a little more a little more all right should come off there in a moment all right this looks really good nice so now we can take the wheel bearing off or the front nut and well then we're gonna gain access to the spindle and we'll go from there so let me clean this up here a little bit and there's an allen head that needs to be um that needs to be uh loosened up and i'll show you a couple of tricks there too but that's actually part of another video so look for that one for getting this hub off completely and then putting it back and adjusting the uh, the uh, bearing clearance so you um you know how to do that in the future you need to take this cap off by gently tapping it off using a screwdriver tapping it with a hammer so this comes off this is pretty much what it should look like uh, grease is not burnt it's really nice nice bright shiny color and now we can take this nut off so what i'm trying to do here is clean the face off a little bit and i try to scribe the position of this slot here right there and when i'm done with it at least i have a reference point how to start with i still should will show you like what should happen like how easy or difficult it should be to to turn this in the the exact clearance of this um but once you have that <clears throat> you can then loosen up this screw here with a five millimeter allen wrench i do that in a moment i just need to finish uh scribing that uh so i have a reference point i'll be right back get that properly scribed loosen the, the clamping screw and then see it wasn't really easy to move this or loosen the, this nut the side and now I can remove the whole hub like so and I can already see what the problem is with the brake sensor but more of that in a moment but uh, well now we can clean this up this is actually looking really good insofar as that the there is no uh, wheel grease bearing or seal leakage the grease looks really good actually now we can work on wheel bearings or brake rotors or whatever it is we need to do and make sure that the it looks really for a 30 plus year old car and looks brand new wow all right so there's that in typical round fashion it got more complicated because you got the dust shield off these small little screws come off got everything loose so far i've got the lower ball joint connection left i need to loosen that one up and more of that in a moment that's another video coming 
and uh well, guess what this thing the sensor is not coming out so what i have to do is i have to fish out the wire and the wire is going to come with me and is what the end looks like comes out of there i we'll have to cut that loose and it sits it's connected to the, this connection right here and here in the tires and i need to fish this through here later but uh so far so good oh not good <laughs> so at least the first part came off which is good now this one on a little bit and on this one because I don't need to uh, let's see if I can get my ball drawing tool under here which I can so <coughs> here the shock absorber is actually making sure that my whole assembly doesn't come apart and let the spring completely come out of the seat because that would be a concern there we go so there's that. <laughs> All right, not much for that. Uh, all right, I got this loose. Now I need that one. And now I can focus on the screw up there to get that one out. All right, last but not least, I'm trying to get this ball joint out of there. Uh, at least to get it off the car. Yes. Getting this one off. It This is, it's going to take a little bit. Oh. And one thing I didn't show you is how... Oh. All right. With that, we finally have this thing out of here. And this is also pretty busted. So... Next, we'll be trying to get the ball joint out, out of the half. Wow. All that I can say is this, this <laughs> lower ball joint is a job. Uh, flame wrench didn't even work. The little Bunsen burner I have doesn't really develop enough heat. And then I, I didn't want to emit the, uh, the uh, ABS sensor and uh, I went to AutoZone, rented a, a tool kit, a ball joint kit, and of course, this thing does not work without significant modifications for a um, for bends. I'll show you in a moment what I mean by that. In order to oh.
it is a job trying to get this, this thing out of there you get the uh, idea this is not for the faint of heart at all Woo! so here i actually have got the new one already started uh, i am out of breath this takes a lot of effort trying to get this back on at a couple of uh, interesting bushings laying around had to modify the the uh renter now my also known as my own uh, puller and pusher because i had to cut into it and significantly modify it i had to in order to push the old ball joint out i cut this thing off because this thing was constantly getting in the way and man they're in there look at how much it got the form by pushing on it but any other conventional push tools you have will eventually because this just goes right over top here and the inside of the axle the half shaft there has such a funky shape that you end up having to modify the living daylights out of this in order for the for the this ring here this push ring and this is what, what initially happened it was sitting kind of sort of like that and I it was pushing against itself so I had to cut this out in order to make room so this would be concentric and I was finally able to push it out but let me tell you on a uh, heavy amount of grease because this thing this rod can easily seize on you and it took every little bit of force this thing had in order to get this thing out of there. So um, it's not for the faint of heart, I can tell you that. So I cleaned up the bore with a flap wheel, greased a little bit, and here you can see I'm almost, almost all the way back in. And I only have a frog hair space between the push tool and this so the regular sleeves that come with that set see how long that is it would have never it would have never fit in there so whatever gets the job done you also might want to spend the money go to a shop and push that out for you with a hydraulic press even that is not all that easy but uh, i'm gonna get there so this is what success looks like the new ball joint is in. Didn't, didn't have to good clean up, didn't take half the effort. And you can also see, and I had to cut into this disc, and even that barely comes out of there. Um, and you also notice that I had to take the brand new rubber boot off by loosening the uh, spring wire which that is the last thing you want to bust while you're manhandling this thing so i'm going to clean this up put the boot on and it's finally reassembly time and here's a, what that looks like and taking the spring off and now it's time oh my god that thing a good one and find that it's new and all but it is going to take a little bit to get the, the rubber boot back over top here there we go one of those nifty buddy tools <laughs> comes in pretty handy to get this back into the groove All right, so now we can take this rubber spring here and trying to slide this back. There you go. Back over top here. <laughs> That might take some finagling. 
There we go. There's one. No, not yet. I might have to completely take this one off. But you get the idea. This thing needs to go way down. There we go. Come on. No. <laughs> you get the idea. I'm gonna putz around with this for some more time. And then we'll get to reassemble the uh, half shaft assembly. Success. So that one is nicely back on here. Here's the new nut. Self looking one. Clean this up and we're ready to clean up our tools and get this back mounted where it belongs. Hard to believe, <laughs> we finally can assemble our half shaft. There we go. is easy today or any other day for that matter so I can tighten this one up and then I can go ahead and tighten the upper ball joint up nice and tight and then uh, we'll start reassembly off the wheel now I can A ball joint. Might have to help this one along a little bit. There you go. Oh, there we go. All right. In the meantime, I can tighten this bad boy up. That one is finished, so there you go. Remember, after tight comes off, so don't overdo it. If I now remember where in the world I actually just put. That stupid nut. Whoa. There you go. Same thing here. I may not have to have the end wrench. This one looks like it's gonna, gonna go on without a hitch. There you go. There we go. There we go. That's tight enough. All right, so that's tightening up the upper ball joint. And if that was your only job, then congratulations, you did it. Other than that, uh, now you can put the rest back together and go from there. I can now put our steering back together. Oh. it does help <laughs> to, to put it in correctly like so took me a moment <laughs> so these are 
these long bolts. help to put it in the right spot oh my god yep that is it there we go in any moment to really put this on tight. shield back on and then it's time to adjust the wheel bearings and that's in another video dust shield is back on now we can mount the wheel hub that little screw you wipe the excess grease off and then we're ready to put the dust cap back on put just a little bit more grease in there not too much yes Nothing is worse than just like that. And we're gonna hammer and gently don't tap on here, tap on this one here. Rotate 180 until you put them out. So you don't want for that thing, you don't want to dent it, but you also want to make sure this bottoms out. Doesn't take much more than that. Now we're gonna do a final spray down of our whole brake part. Snow. Oh yeah. Wow, this is really easy to turn. Nice. And we are good to go. And now we can put the brakes back. That's all right. Time to assemble or brake caliper. Yeah. Make sure. Clean, dry, still pretty good amount of um, right pads left. This mess. We now we put the 
those bolts in. Don't forget to tighten them. Dab a Loctite and we're good to go. One last tip. See this? The brake pads bear, don't make any contact. So always pump the brakes before you um, get going again because you're going to have a nasty surprise if you stomp on the brakes and um, <laughs> nothing is going to stop you because the, the brake pads are not in position and um, yeah that's going to be a moment of panic other than that we're ready to go can, we can put the wheel back on if you have any suspension um, rubber bushing parts um, were left loose that is the time to fix those and put them on tight and other than that Gute Fahrt. Give the channel a like. Bye bye. All right. Got everything tightened up. Dog is ready for a test drive. Everything tightened up. And uh, yeah. be safe. Try to go ahead and get your um, your classic cars back on the road. And keep them there. <laughs> Maintain them well. Uh, like the channel and rec make a recommendation for people whom you know who might benefit from it. Have a great time. Bye-bye.